Hi everyone, this is Omer from RV Sports again. Today, this video is not about the product review. This is more about, you know, educating people around English Willow, which English Willow you should, should be selecting, what you should be looking, looking at when you're buying a bat, and you know, some, some really basic stuff about English Willow that people actually do not understand, okay? So, before I go into the, um, you know, the English Willow perfection and you know, why you know there is gradings and you know why grade one grade two grade three you know there's so much confusion no supplier or anybody who's selling bats online if they claim this is a grade one willow that's their personal claim and i can do the same thing but the only grading that comes legitimate from is actually from the supplier who's supplying to the manufacturer so that's those guys know actually the which what was the what is the actual grading of the english willow Anybody who's, who's telling you that's their personal opinion that most likely they could they could be right in most cases that this is the great this will this willow is. But in a lot of time I've seen uh, you know a lot of you know vendors who sell bats you know uh, on a store they do bad reviews you know they do pink tests they do you know um, um, you know they do um, sometime you know they, they you know feel of the bat which is important. But let me tell you something about the pink ping of the bats. Any new bat, any great, you cannot decide based on the ping only. Let me let me mark 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 my words by just this thing that okay, if my ping is good, okay, the bat is good. That's not the only thing you should be checking. You should be checking the same time the feel. You should be checking the weight of the bat. You should be checking how many grains it has. You should be checking the grains quality front and the back. You know imperfection in the willow. There are a lot of factors involved and you buy a bag. So that's why, you know, as we pick hand, hand pick bag, we are niche inventory, uh, uh, you know, uh, we maintain niche inventory, so, so our, uh, most of the willow we have is, 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 is perfect, to be honest with you, uh, as far as, you know, the pricing goes with it. So, so let me, so this is a 18 year old bat. Look at this bat. So, actually, I, I personally fixed this bat. This is 18, 18 years old bat, as you can see. It was in such a disastrous shape that it took me three days to fix it. Uh, we did some really fancy thing with this bat. The, the, the owner of the bat loved this bat because this bat is fully knocked. Okay, fully knocking is also one thing that people get confused. Manufacturer, when they put a sticker which says knocked, fully knocked, there is no such thing as fully knocked in, in this, uh, in cricket, um, in cricket world by to be honest with you that's my opinion knocking is a is an organic process which happens with time as you play your bat knocks automatically the more you play better the knocking gets on the bat and the better and, and the strike comes out of the bat the only thing which, which which person needs to do when they buy a new bat is they need to knock the bat so that bat does not break right away which means you you do the edges you know you knock the edges shift the edges you knock the bat, you oil the bat, you seal the bat but after oiling so that your bat is ready and when you start playing with it, it does not break. But the knocking process goes on. When you start playing with the bat, after 8 months, it will it will actually play better what it was used to be on the first month. So knocking is, is, a, is, an, is an indefinite process. This bat I can say because, you know, look, you know, look at the, the edges, look at the edges. It's all round because this can this bat cannot be knocked further. It's 18 years old. <laughs> I can say this bat is fully knocked because this is this is this is a monster, by the way. It's old, but old is gold. So so you know, as I said, you know, when you buy a bat, you, you need to you know you need to look at the willow, you need to look at the imperfection, you need to see how it feels. Um, you also need to you know sometimes it's good to if you are picky about the um, you know if you are picky picky about the sweet spot you know you can use a mallet just to see how you how it's bouncing back so for this bat uh so i would say bottom to almost close to the handle and this could be because this bat is very old and it's fully knocked it's very it's a masterpiece so but you know sometimes you know the, you, you won't get a rebound with the mallet um, uh, you know, mostly you will not get any rebound in the toe doesn't matter how thick your toe is it is just because you know that's the way uh, bad actually 
uh, respond to a pink test, you know, uh, to, a, to a melee test. So, so as I said, you know, this is one way to check it. Um, pink test, you know, as I said, it's not really, you should not be only doing pink test, you know, and you know, vice. The only thing you should feel when you're doing pink test is how much shock I'm getting on the handle. So this is one more thing you need to look into. If the handle is aligned properly, 100%, the bat is balanced. What I mean by that is, look at the spine. The spine of the bat should match the center of the handle, which means your spine and your center of the handle is aligned. If this alignment is, is perfect, your bat is fully balanced, which means when you do a pin test, you, you will not feel the shock on the handle unless you do a pin test really at the bottom, right? That's pretty natural because, you know, you're holding the bat from the handle and you're pinging, you're doing a pin test from the bottom. So, so, so that, you know, even in this bat, because it's, it's a masterpiece, I don't feel anything, even if I do, if I hit the, the bottom of the, of the bat. So, you should not be feeling any shock. There might be a little shock, which is normal, but um, a good balanced bat with, you know, uh, also one more thing. So a lot of new bats come with four, five corks, which means you see the cork in the handle, they absorb the shock. So if you have five corks, it means more absorption, less corks, less absorption. But at the same time, as I said, there are a lot of factors involved, you know, when you, when you really have to buy a bat and, and we can certainly help you with that, no problem. So this bat, you know, when I do a ping, the ping is good because it's fully knocked back, uh, but it does not have any it does not have any any shock. I don't feel anything on the handle. So this is this is an example how this is these are some examples and use cases for you know what kind of bat you need to select and, and what so you should be looking into. Okay, now we're gonna go to the below. Okay, some people say you know the more grains, the better bat, less grains, it's not a good bat. That's not right. The kind of cricket we play in um, the local community. I think um, six to nine grain is a good thing. So if you if your bat is six to nine grains and it's properly knocked and you maintain the bat for long uh, so that there's organic knocking happening for the bat, you should be good to go. Uh, um, obviously the, the reason more grains are expensive because that's a better willow. It has lived for uh, more years. So, you know, farmers have maintained that tree for long enough. So that's why it's more expensive. But uh, speaking about the willow, so there are a few things you need to look into the willow. The first thing is obviously the grains, we'll go into that. But there are some suppliers or manufacturers who sell English willow bags. And those bags have 19, 20 grains. So, the, so look, look this, this, this is English willow, right? Has only around 8, 9 grains. But those bags which have 19 plus or 18 plus grains, those are not English willow bags. Because those are European willow bats. Uh, I have personally used those bats. There's nothing wrong with those bats. It's a, it's a cheap willow. Uh, but those are a little heavy. The feel is more hard. It's not soft. English willow is more soft. Um, it lasts long. But European willow is not English willow, by the way. So, so you need to look into that. So more grain does not mean you're really buying English willow. You, you have to be careful with that. So sometimes there are also, you know, sometimes there are, um, some imperfection in the willow. So the first imperfection could be speck. It's a small dot in the willow, and it's actually it, it happens because some flies may make their home inside the tree uh, uh, when it's growing, and they lay, lay their eggs. And with time, you know those eggs become get stuck there, and it becomes a dark spot. It's a small tiny spot you can see in the picture. Um, uh, in, in the video, that's that. Those tiny spots are not a big deal. Not 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 a big of a deal. So you could, you know, it's try to avoid having those spots on the front. But even if they are front on the front one or two, that's fine. The second imperfection is butterfly stain. Uh, and, and you know, the butterfly stain on on English willow means these are like a wing type butterfly stains um, on on the willow. Um, and these are actually, you know because of frost damage on the tree. When, when it snow, snow gets there, stuck on the tree, it may cause uh, some imper imperfections because of that and then, and then you get butterfly stains. Um, 
you are absolutely fine having any any bat which has butterfly stain so any english willow bat with butterfly stain don't worry about it it does not cause any major damage to the bat neither any performance degrade the third thing is false growth so sometimes uh, this is more of a you feel like one day you have two separate woods glued together but that's 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 pretty much what it is uh, and this is this is like tree ha may have stopped growing in certain uh, time of the year because of you know any any reason and then the, what happens is even though it's a it's it's single a single piece of wood but you get a straight line in the wood and it, it, it when it, when you look at it it feels like you have two separate willows but that's not it it's it's, it's a sing single willow it's just a line makes it two but it's not two you may have a bat with that it sh it should be fine does not cause any 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 major performance issues the next one is dead knot you should not have that thing on your on your fur on the front of your blade the reason for that is dead knot means the growth of the willow uh, has stopped on the um, on the wood and it has dried the time and it's very hard you should never have a dead knot on a bat on the front of the bat if you're really buying a cheap willow you could have dead knot um, uh, at the back of the blade but on the front never ever your bat will break or that or that that specific dead knot will come out okay and then uh, what's next so sometimes you know a lot of vendors uh, they provide warranty if you have wind damage on the bat we will replace it uh, we could do the same thing but we try to find bats without the wind damage so what wind damage is when there is a storm in the region where the willow is being grown because of high winds the the the, the molecular chemistry of the wood may get affected and then um, you will not see any imperfection in the willow but there is something in the in the willow that could cause the bat to break you may have seen a few videos in international cricket if i remember right uh, the bat breaking right from the from between the uh, you know the mid from the middle right where the handle ends that's because of wind strong okay uh, it, mostly the old kind of willows which have this in fact in this imperfection has been found during the manufacturing process but sometimes they get missed as well and you cannot visibly notice that uh, the next one is you know uh, uh, what do we have in the list so bleached and non bleached bleaching gives bad a nice white look so it looks clean uh, it sometimes hide imperfections as well a lot of uh, but most of the manufacturers nowadays they do bleaching so that the willow comes out nice and clean uh, but um, at the same time as I said it can sometimes hide some imperfections and you may feel like you're getting a very premium willow um, so uh, I think that's pretty much it uh, and uh, um, what I'm going to do is, you know, we put out this video, we put the, some we put some pictures so that you know you guys get to know what I'm talking about. But as I said, when it comes to willow, um, there's you know no any any store or seller, their their grading of their personal opinion, or maybe they're getting feedback from the supplier. But the actual willow grading is 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 based on what the actual supplier to the manufacturer is providing. That's that's the way you can find it but mostly it's your personal opinion anytime when you are buying that you have to keep in mind you have to you know you know as i said you know look and feel you can also always come to us you can always judge us i mean sometimes you know if you are living in a if you're not in texas if you're not local if you buy that bag from us uh, and, and based on your recommendation we send you a piece if you don't like it send it back we'll refund your money or we will even give you a replacement so that's it. That, that's all for the below and and you know the imperfections and also uh, what you should be looking at when you're buying a cricket bat. Thank you and uh, you know keep watching and wait for more videos.